The benefits of an animal-based diet. There are numerous advantages that can come with an animal-based diet, including reduced bloating, increased strength, enhanced mental clarity, alleviated PMS symptoms, decreased reliance on products, a shift away from processed foods, time savings in the kitchen, less stress about meal preparation, decreased need for dietary supplements, consistent satiation instead of feeling hungry or depleted, long-term cost effectiveness, a simplified diet, eliminating the need for extensive meal planning, a deeper connection to nature, improved complexion with nourished and less dry skin, healthier, stronger hair, skin, and nails for a radiant appearance. Moreover, this lifestyle choice requires less time and money spent on complex self-care routines, simplifies life by reducing the need for excessive possessions, fosters a lifestyle focused on truly living. Here's how I would start the balance of my fat to carb intake. Take the ratio one to 1.5 grams of protein to fat and carbs. So for example, I weigh 110 pounds. So I would take one gram of my protein intake, which would be 110 pounds, multiply it by 1.5. That would equal about 165 grams of fat to carb ratio. So if I split it equally, that would be about 82 grams of each fat and carbs. Now, I know myself, I tuned in and I actually do better with a little bit more fat than carbs, so I've adjusted those levels. And in addition, my lifestyle is super active, so I've actually raised both of those levels too. So everyone is different. So I suggest tuning into your body and seeing which one you thrive more off of, whether it's the fat or the carbs, but at least this gives you a baseline of where to start. Here are my daily protein recommendations and guidelines. You wanna make sure that you get one gram of protein per pound of goal body weight. Now, a pound of ground beef is typically anywhere from 100 grams of protein to 115 grams of protein, give or take, depending on how lean you get your meat. I also like to include organs in my daily intake, about two ounces of a variety of different organs, such as liver, but I don't go over five ounces a week of liver specifically. Liver, kidney, heart, pancreas, thymus, I like to include those in also my protein calculations. This is all the protein I eat in a day on one plate. I'm 110 pounds and I want to maintain my body weight and keep my body composition. So I will aim for at least 110 grams of protein. However, for me, I vary in between 115 grams to 125. I eat twice a day and if we were to just focus on my protein intake, I laid it all out on a plate for you of what my daily intake of protein looks like. So for breakfast, something typical will be about a half a pound of ground beef as well as an egg and some fresh organs. And then for dinner, I will also do another half pound of ground beef. I hope this helps you. Our appetites are tightly integrated with the circadian rhythm of the sun. So I keep it pretty simple. At night, I should be resting, sleeping, and digesting. And then I will move, play, and eat during the sunlight hours. I'm not super dogmatic about this schedule. I just do what works, what helps me optimize my sleep and what helps give me energy throughout the day. So what I do know is what helps me is that I work out when I'm fasted because that just makes me feel better. And then also giving me plenty of hours to digest before I actually fall asleep. So in the morning I work out fasted and I eat twice a day. So I break the fast starting at 10 a.m. And then I start cooking my meals around 4.30 and then have my last bite at 5 p.m. Um, and then I don't go to bed until 9 p.m. giving me plenty of time to digest. So then from 5 p.m. to 10 a.m. to when I start eating again, that gives me about a 16 hour fasting window. Now there are some days where I'll have a little honey or a little fruit, depending on my day, depending on my activity, depending on where I'm at in the world. Maybe dinner will be a little bit later. Um, I don't sweat it too much. So I do what works for me and I think that you should do the same for you. So the social scene can be quite challenging with friends and family. So here are three tips that maybe you can share in conversation when you make your transition to animal based and this comes up. So the first one being that thriving looks different on anyone. And so if you weren't thriving before, you have goals that you want to meet and having an animal based diet is what best resonates with you and you will try anything and everything to reach your goals and feel like you're really thriving. Then the second is the, um, you know, where's the proof? sort of conversation and typically I just hand them or show them a podcast and that is a little breadcrumb of information and they can go from there that way you don't get into any 
science debates and trying to have them let go of old narratives such as meat is bad for you. And then the third thing is, is just have patience. And once you see that you're thriving and you're reaching your goals, then they're gonna see it. And then they might soften their stance on how they view your diet. Here's a beginner's animal-based meal idea for you. You don't need a complicated recipe. You just need to assemble simple ingredients that is super easy and extremely flavorful. It has all of your macronutrients covered from proteins, fats, to carbohydrates, and it certainly has your micronutrients in here as well, especially when it's sourced really well. So I call this dish Hello Nourishment. All you need is ground beef, cheese, butter, salt, and some honey. So here's what you do. You take a hamburger, you go ahead and slather some butter on there and make it super melty. Then you're gonna add some delicious honey on top. Then sprinkle a bit of salt and of course, grade some cheese on that burger after. Trust me, this is the best burger that you will ever have. And to make it even more simple, I included all of these ingredients that you can assemble and make at home. Hydration for the day looks a little something like this. Sodium is super important in hydration, so I do about half a teaspoon of salt into an eight ounce glass of water in the morning. Every morning I start my day with that. Then about 30 minutes prior to my workout, I do the same concoction, eight ounces of water and half a teaspoon of salt. Now, depending on you, your workout, how much you sweat, if you go outside, all of that, you might want to intake more. Also, for my coffee drinkers out there, I do eight ounce glass of water with half a teaspoon of salt per mug. I only do one throughout the day. However, if you are a coffee drinker, I would consider that ratio. Also, I salt my meals generously. In addition to that, I do eat fruit throughout the day. So that is also how I am consuming um, my water content as well as nutrients and minerals. Hope this helps.